Good so uh, we have, as you know, uh, closed on our uh, financing. We have uh, signed the <coughs> estoppel, which our financing required for us to proceed. We gave, uh, we signed our uh, contract with Damlin Solar to build this and 11 other sites in the seed portfolio. Not all 18 sites, but 11 others. Uh, and so we're we're working furiously creating schedules. Uh, we have revised engineering. This is the Stella Weiss is the engineering firm of uh, of Damlin, and they have just uh, they came forward with a uh, kind of a revised design. Uh, we pushed back a little bit. They revised that and came up with a, a design which is a little larger. We, when we last were in front of you, we were at about 56 kW. Now it's 66 kW. What does that extra 10 kW get you? It gets you more savings. And in fact, about $30,000 of additional savings over the life of the project. And does it get you too much solar? Now this is one of the things actually that, that you are advised by in the general environment is don't let your solar get too big. Don't let the solar provider say, oh, they want to oversell and, 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 and make more money building more uh, for you. And we're keeping down under uh, eight, about 80% of the total uh, use of energy. So we're not over, uh, or actually it's less than that. And so we're not over about 85% of your bill. Why? Because you've already done some energy efficiency work, something else that you've also been advised to do before you do your solar. Downsize the solar. You've already done that with new pool pumps. Great. If you, have, if you want to do more energy efficiency work on lighting and so forth, there's room for that and you're not going over by just holding down the size of the system. So um, we're utilizing more of the roof on the uh, main building than uh, was expected. Frank can go into some of those details. The canopy is exactly as we uh, had provided. Uh, they've done a clever thing. They've already advanced and con uh, contacted permitting folks. So we're, we are now in a position, uh, we have also, uh, they've held the line on uh, the cost. Of course, the cost of this is a little bit more, but the output is higher, so the uh, cost of, of, or the payment for energy, which is at a set per kWh price in our contract with you, uh, will deliver more over the life, which means we can pay uh, for the slightly larger size uh, system and um, still not, not look too bad. Um, our fee is still less than 10% of your savings. Let me say that again. Our fee is still less than 10% of your projected savings. By quite a margin. And so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to stop there. I think we are ready to, to mm -hmm. get your agreement on the readiness to proceed. I have more things to say about uh, uh, other topics that have been circulating this week, but let's let Frank... Uh, say anything that he wants to say, describe, describe some of the work, particularly well, if you could separation between the work around the pool that we are, have specified and all the activity in the pool, because that's a, clearly a concern of the rec department. Um, Frank Gobart uh, with Damlin Solar, uh, president and owner of the company. Um, we actually went through a great deal with a variety of designs uh, for the system. The, the portion that we did not want to alter was the canopy. Um, we were actually able to come up with a design that had more solar. We scaled it back in order to meet um, the desired goals, um, staying within the, your, the limits um, that were requested. With that, we have quite a bit on the uh, pool house, the canopy we left, and then on the main rec center and fire department. Uh, we can actually operate uh, very sensitive or, or aware of the sensitivity to operation of the pool. Um, both my kids were on the swim team and um, been out for the morning setups and things, so I certainly understand the challenges and um, with that and trying to avoid any um, issues with, with the pool during the summer. With this, we can um, do this in stages. Um, we set up a schedule that I think is realistic, uh, although I believe with some of the prep work we've done and we've already been in contact um, and put some of the plans before some of the different agencies uh, with the idea of um, hopefully expediting that. Um, so with that, the canopy is um, 
I, I believe is the biggest concern with the pool. We can work on the rooftops, we can alter our hours and things. Um, the canopy, we have to go through pool engineering because of the structural steel. Then that gets presented to the county, go through the, the review, and then obviously the, the time frame for the work itself. If we can get that moved forward, we can isolate that area and operate, um, and we can also do some of the work uh, prior. We have had discussions with the county, and they will allow us to do some of the trenching and things uh, with a special inspection and have that done. So we can get a lot of the prep work done um, if it looks like that we can get in within the window. If not, we can hold off on that portion of the project and then put that uh, and fit that into when it's more desirable from their standpoint. Um, if we can isolate, we can fence off that area and we can come in and uh, we can have guys here at you know, 6 o'clock in the morning as long as the uh, local jurisdiction don't have any problems from a sound aspect. Uh, we can start normally at 7. Um, oftentimes we can start earlier if it's uh, not involving noise that will affect the neighbors. Um, so with that we can come in and alter our hours with that portion of the work uh, if that works for you. Uh, we can get in the structural steel in a relatively short period of time if we can have everything prepped and then put on the, uh, the panels. Then we can come back and work on what I'll say off hours in order to finish off the electrical so that you could potentially use it during the day uh, if that's desired. If not, we can hold off on that portion of it. Um, we can, um, we're ready to provide whatever flexibility is necessary in order to, you know, to accommodate it. So and from the, uh, the, both the fire department rec center and on the pool house, we can operate uh, those during normal business hours and um, not affect the daily activities. Any questions? Um, so how long would you need to complete the construction of the canopy and the, uh, and the pool area? The canopy, if we can stage that, we can get in what I'm uh, proposing is that we would get in and do the trench and the prep work where we've already started with some of the design engineering, even though we are uh, uh, officially um, approved from your standpoint, just trying to get ahead of it, we're doing that at our own risk. Um, if we can come up with a footing design, we could probably get the footings uh, and the trenching done during a week's um, period of time, then we have to have the structural steel made. So once that is in place, um, that is a separate company that we hire that does uh, just the canopy designs. Um, that's and, and it takes yes. several weeks for yes. structural steel to be properly specified, manufactured, delivered, and so forth. So there may be hurry up and work, delay time, and then come back. So basically it is unrealistic to expect that you will be able to complete the canopy before the full season starts. Which is April 1st? Okay. 4th? April 4th for the yes. first mm -hmm. spring season. So. You will not be able to do that, okay? Sure. So we are basically, if any, we're looking at partial implementation that would be on the rooftop, unless we would want to have an area that's fenced off and Correct. you're working on that. Yes. Okay. How do you get electricity from? the canopy to the D mark? Uh, we will trench uh, from one of the um, the main post mm -hmm. and we'll run that back to the uh, pool uh, equipment house uh, in the back. To the equipment house? That is correct. I see. Yes. Okay. Does the partial implementation of the uh, solar project affect our ability to receive the um, the CSI? Yes, CSI. subsidy. <laughs> That's something that I, I know that Derek and um, yeah, I've done some levels of research on that. If uh, if it, the the short answer is I don't know. Uh, I definitely know that there is a history of these deadlines being extended, but that is also kind of based on where they are in the project of construction is actually happening. I think if we go to them and say, hey, this is a timing issue with our operations, we are not going to actually start the, this part of our rebate until after summer. Uh, I don't know. My gut tells me that might be a tough sell. Um, I don't know that. I haven't 
taken this to the CSI office yet. I've basically done research and talked to other industry experts who tell me that in their experience there have been extensions under these circumstances, uh, but I'm not taking it to CSI until I know where I'm at. And we will be able to receive energy from the partial install and then complete the canopy and then go 100%, correct? Uh, or would we need in to wait for... Tell me about the PG&E interconnect. The PG&E interconnect would typically include the entire system. Um, so that's something that we would have to go through a process and um, see if we, we've been able to... Yeah, there are two meters. Uh, in theory, you could separate it, but pg e would like to have it as simple and straightforward as possible and wrap everything in at once. But, but you do have two meters, so it might be able to separate and, and phase it that way. Start one so it's something we'd have to work with the... But for, for, a clean break, for a clean break, I'm sorry, uh, we would have to wait until everything is installed and then switch. Frustrating. Yes, at least on that one meter. Okay. And this, the, um, the panels are where exactly? One's on the equipment house and the other one's on the community center? We have panels on the canopy. Mm -hmm. We have one what I'll refer to as the pool house mm -hmm. um, down at the pool. And then we have some on top of this building over the fire department and over the rec center. Okay, let me rephrase. I yes. Um, as far as the... Uh, um, Electrical connections. The electrical connections will be made at uh, two locations. One will be at the um, pump house. The pump house. Out, right. out of the, okay. the far side, out by the creek. Um, which, yep. so. I think it's right yes, here. here. Understood. So this will get trenched through the landscape. We'll come up at one of the rear posts. Uh -huh. That's what we're currently designed to do. Okay. We'll come out across. Um, and then tie into the pump house. Okay. Uh, that gives us the ability to back feed uh, through the main line that comes around and back to the firehouse. Ah, the okay. rec center and the firehouse will actually have a separate set of inverters in connection at the building itself. What about the pool house? It's uh, pool house, we're coming off this corner right here, right down the, um, along the fence line. Um, at this point, I'm recommending on the outside, we are affecting the lawn and things there. There's yeah. a small barbecue there. And we can come right down the inside here, right across in front of a planter, and then we come back and make a tie-in at that same the same trench. Mm -hmm. And from this area here and across and back, that's something that we can get, uh, we propose doing a special inspection for, and being able to, in essence, kind of get that underground <coughs> work done prior to uh, the rest of the uh, project. So any disruption to the pool deck is only going to be on the It'll far be side. Right in the sort of yeah, we spent a fair amount of time out here searching the conduit runs and and things. Uh, we we're really trying to stay away from you know having to do anything on the deck that's itself. Great. So um, it took us a little while to figure it out, and uh, but that's how we came up with and checking all the panels. So this will come right off this corner, across right through here. And then back down, and then these it'll come right to this location, and then tie into a common trench that will then go back to the building. Um, the inverters are proposed to be inside the pool house. That way, there's no issues with um, kids being able to tamper with it or anything. Um, the one for this building would be on the back uh, in the um, fenced-in area behind the fire section, and that's what we're proposing. Obviously, um, input from uh, the staff and other things. Very helpful. Very good. Um, in your history of <coughs> implementing systems like this, easy, medium, ridiculously hard? No, it's, it's, I mean, the project itself is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of construction background. Uh, I installed my first system in 1979, uh, still operating today. Um, so we do a lot of these from uh, smaller systems to significantly larger. Uh, we're building the solar farm for MC up in Nevada. Um, so we'll do from you know, multi-megawatt systems down to um, residential. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's just this, uh, it's just the logistics and uh, coordination um, around the pool and trying to keep everything open and um, have it so that we're in the shadows and not 
in the middle of everything. Understood. So. Um, if your kids were on the swim team today, what would be the, your concerns about um, moving forward with the canopy um, during the swim season? Well, the, the obvious issue are, you know, the kids are curious and they want to see what's going on. So we want to make sure that uh, it's uh, secure um, so that they can't uh, get in and around. And then uh, we take um, our regular precautions, but we'll take additional precautions just to make sure that there's um, not any debris or screws or anything that can get onto the uh, pool deck because, you know, you have a lot of kids walk around barefoot and things like that. Um, outside of that, isolating and doing the work um, <coughs> itself is pretty straightforward from our standpoint. Um, we do a lot of occupied projects. We do a lot of things in, in the city um, and, you know, lifting the things off the street. Um, this, you know, we would probably come in early and do the staging. Um, get materials in and out before they <coughs> open, um, rather than during normal hours, uh, just to avoid that. And um, as of that sort of things, we can alter our schedule to, you know, try to minimize having crews or things uh, in the, in those locations if if there's any events going on. Mm -hmm. So the area under the county where currently our rental tables are for the pool parties that would be unavailable for the duration of the construction? Um, not necessarily. Um, my, well, let me, yes. no. um, there will be, I mean, we can have the structure up. Um, no, we can have the structure up and you would be able to utilize, potentially utilize that. Uh, I wouldn't want, I would want to make sure there's no open trenches or anything like that, which is why we've come up to this corner, because we could isolate that. Um, Any time that any of the work is going on, or the structure is going up, or panels are going up, um, no, we cannot have anybody under there. Um, if you had something that we needed to pull out, if the structure was up and secure, then you would be able to. I mean, we could pull back those fences, and you would be able to have some access under. <coughs> and we are looking at active construction but, time of of the canopy. Well, depending on if I can accelerate it. So not to dodge the question, uh, we've done a lot of uh, preliminary work with the idea of trying to be able to shorten this period. Um, if, um, if that doesn't work out and we have to go through what I'll say a normal time frame, it would be uh, as the schedule shows, so uh, it would be over a month's time that uh, we'd be involved there. Eric, and it's, it's my understanding that there is an, uh, there's a preferred time within the pool season that we'd like to have this done before before summer actually gets into into full swing. So is that basically timetable? Is that basically when the school season lets out for summer? Uh, well, yeah, I'd let Shane talk a little bit more about that. I would say the preferred time is to have it not happen at all during the pool uh, <laughs> right, or the season, to be honest. But uh, uh, I, I'm going to defer that to Shane. Shane. So, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we open to the public uh, beginning in April. So construction going on at a time, you know, isn't great, but doable probably. Mm -hmm. uh, just because we normally start out fairly slow and it starts building from there. Yeah. Construction going on starting any time into, you know, if the kids get out June 13th, mm -hmm. would be uh, a lot worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So based on that, do you feel that is finishing that portion for the canopy is realistic before, before June? At this point, I would say that it's challenging. Um, if we get the approval this evening, it's something that we would go and be pushing very hard on. And what I would say is that once we got the commitments on when the steel is available and how fast we could do that, um, then I would come back to you and say, listen, here's our time frame. And then you could either let us know that you want us to try to um, push it to the front of the project or uh, we can hold off and do it at the later setback portion. That's going to be a little bit of a moving target, okay. uh, because again, we still have to have the engineering done. We still have to go through the county and have uh, the permitting uh, approvals. That leads into my next question, which is, if, if for whatever reason we, as a board, decide not to proceed tonight, what 
penalties or costs do we then incur as, as, as a district? We have not calculated any uh, such penalties or costs. Uh, we are very much interested, since we were already signed, to have a solid pricing from somebody who can handle a complex project uh, that you'll get to a yes. Um, if, you know, I guess it was, it would be um, if you said, well, you must do all of your construction starting September 15th or something like that, we will probably have to renegotiate uh, and I'm not sure what all the consequences of that would be. But it would, might, and anyone feel free to, to correct me, we would be responsible for any time spent on engin engineering and what would additionally? If, if you canceled out, mm -hmm. uh, then yes, and we've already um, initiated and conducted much of the engineering. You can yeah. see the product of it right there. Yeah. Uh, so. So there would be the cost of the engineering if you decided to cancel the project or do something different. Okay. Are there so right now we're dependent on one timeline for approval by the the permitting process. Normally takes a couple of weeks, um, or in my experience it can run up to twelve weeks and longer. Well, on this type of project, I would say that you're probably looking at about 30 days okay. under a normal process. And then the timeline for the uh, steel, the once steel the engineer specs are submitted. It's typically going to be another 30 to 45 days. Um, but again, we've already engaged with them, so we uh, shortening all that, so all those processes. Okay. So we're looking at at least two months. So if we started, you're going to pre-engineer everything and you're just really basically setting up for the uh, structure to be put in steel-wise and then the covering, that should would be two or three days, I would imagine. Putting up the steel quick. structure yeah. would be uh, relatively quick, yeah. yes. And then we have to set the panels and then do the electrical work. So, so once we get everything there and in place and we have it staged over at our warehouse at okay. Smith Ranch Road, and um, then bring everything in and put it together. Okay. So it's always waiting for permitting. Construction will go fast once yeah. it's set up for right. I don't see any problem. Oftentimes, these going through the process and all the approvals takes longer than the project. Uh, I mean, yes. And the summer starts June. June thirteenth is the first day of the summer camps. We would definitely be down by that. June thirteenth. Um, yeah. it's yeah. Under a normal process, I would say probably not. Um, again, if we can take advantage, I mean, if, if we're able to expedite these things, and that we would know probably for another couple of weeks, at, uh, assuming that we are approved to move forward. Now, Frank, one of the things that we had kind of talked about too is understanding that being a moving target, you would get to a point where you would know if it's a go, yes. no go, that, yep, I'm going to be able to get it done by this time, or it's just not going to happen by this time. So, assuming it is just not going to happen by that time, then I think the other thing that we discussed uh, last week was the ability to take that portion of the project and make the decision to push it back to the end of summer at that time. Um, not necessarily the end of pool season, but the end of, you know, when school goes back in. So it would be more like a uh, early, mid-August. Correct. And with that, then uh, we do all the roof areas, and we have all the conduit and everything prepped for it uh, with the rest of the construction. Um, and then we can hold off on that portion of it. Okay. Um, David, any thoughts on that? I just wanted to uh, get back to Mr. Uh, Hayler's big picture question. You know, is this a is this a complex and, and really difficult job or a really challenging job? I would say that among the seed projects, this is moderately complex but not difficult. And one of the things that we like about Danlin, and we liked since the beginning of this, when we first started dealing with you, we were hoping that they would be our general contractor is that they're very, uh, very um, 
entrepreneurial and inventive and quick, and they know the local permitting folks, and also they are actually local, so they will be uh, have the extra weight of uh, personal embarrassment of showing up here in, in, in the community center if something is not going well. So, um. I have a an, another question for um, either of you is knowing that that you know, we as a board primarily handle the policy end of, of decision making, having to come back and get approval from us directly at, at these different times, has that, and, and, and again, being only being able to do so once a month, has that held up anything for, for you on your end? Uh, I'm not going to uh, Yes, there have been some uh, times when we've done an extraordinary amount of extra work and time, uh, but the past is the past, and we're, our, we're right here, ready, poised. So let's get this thing underway. From this Bye. point on, is there is there necessarily anything else that would need to come back as a policy decision, or could this essentially be handed over to district staff and district manager to coordinate with you and, and essentially be able to run with? The, the typical PPA process is designed such that you're exactly right, that, that the policy-making board says, okay, uh, green flag or whatever checker it, is it the checkered flag or is it the, it's a flag. <laughs> flag says go and and then you step back and you watch and if some if there's a complaint if there's a problem then obviously you know how to find us right away and we will uh, address that issue uh, but just sort of step back uh, let us work with staff, local staff with the fire marshal on technical uh, restrictions on what we can do for setbacks from the roof and all those things and and watch it happen. And watch this guy be more inventive than he's saying that he can do right now and do it faster than he says he can do right now. Of course, we could also get held up by a steel uh, manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Arbitrary. It could happen. Very well. So, um, do I understand correctly, we would want, or you are ready to start right away, yes. correct, with the project? Correct. And um, if we were to start with the uh, roof community center and then the full house, that takes how many months? Well, um, again, that's on the schedule, the proposed schedule. But I'm sorry, what, I'm, I'm just okay, find it very difficult to read. That's why I'm No, no discussion. problem. What, what would happen is we have to complete engineering, assuming the design and uh, everything's approved. Then we'll finalize our engineering for structural and things. Um, mm -hmm. Then we submit for a permit package. Um, so engineering would take another uh, week or so. Um, assuming everybody's okay with this design, and if we need to tweak anything, we can do that. It may add a few more days, uh, and then we'd submit for a permit package. Once we get that back, then we can go ahead and start construction right away. Um, and we, again, that would be probably a month or, yes. or so. Approximately. Um, because you know where I'm leading uh, with this question, right? Summer camps? Yes. Yeah. Now, with this, we would be rooftops, and we would be um, getting on and off the roofs on areas that uh, would hopefully, you know, we've predetermined um, that are more advantageous uh, for the rec center and things we'd probably enter from the end of the building here just so there are no kids at all. Uh, we could find a location here probably um, that's something off or an area where we can go where kids aren't going to have access to the ladders. Um, so we can do that again prior to this, assuming everything's okay. Uh, we could start right away on this trenching portion that would come across and have all that end backfilled and everything before anything happens, uh, which would be my goal. So yeah. open trenches, uh, you know, we cover them we, and with uh, plywood and things, but uh, from my aspect, not having any open trenches. I mean, be because, because of this delay that happened, yes. it, it really puts a twist on our summer operations, I think, and it will take uh, Shane's experience and mm -hmm. your experience to find optimal access places and uh, ensure safety of everybody. Yeah. It certainly makes it a little bit more challenging, but uh, as I said, we've done a lot of uh, you know, projects and with a lot of logistical issues and things. So. Mm -hmm. Shane, due to that concern that was brought up, do you feel that 
a significant issue, or do you feel that's something that, that is, should be able to be handled or work with? Um, you know, I'm still, you know, I definitely, Frank and I um, talk, I'm still kind of grasping what the construction is going to look like during that time period um, and what size, you know, what footprint it's going to have. Um, actually, like in the, like at the top layer, like most, I'm not so worried about ladders being up and that type of thing as far as accessing the roofs. When you guys are working on the canopy um, near the top pool, uh, so people going in and out of the toilet, does the top pool need to be closed uh, during that period I'm sorry, of time? Does what need? Does the top pool area need to be closed while you're working on the canopy? The, the this pool? Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. So th that's probably my biggest concern. That and just if we were to start um, noise during the day, um, you know, you have lab swimmers and that type of thing coming here to send out and swim laps. Uh, they have earplugs. And um, Mr. Kunhardt, you said that if we were to postpone construction until September, it would put a significant twist, and you would have to renegotiate with the with the contractor. Yeah, yeah, get him to promise that he won't change the price on us, and I'll be I'll be delighted. But we'll do whatever we can. We're we're very much vested in the community, obviously. So we'll we'll do whatever we can to make uh, to accommodate because, everybody. You know, given given the complexity, um, I mean, again, for you, I'm sure it's not very complex. But yeah. what I'm picturing is multiple ladders, fences, hmm. buckets, screws, kids running around, and I'm sure you've been here during uh, camp day. Uh, my that daughter was one of your camp counselors for a number of years. Yes. So it's it's a madhouse to mm -hmm. say the least. It's a very well organized chaos. I'm very <laughs> grateful for this genius. But um, I um, am worried about you know. Now, that camps when did camp start? Yeah, June thirteenth. June thirteenth. And is. Talking about the additional or the other work, is there a significant amount that you'll be able to do before that, before that time? I would like to have um, the pool roof or pool house roof um, pretty much completed. I want to have all the trenching done. Yeah. Um, this is the, the roof that is the uh, most secure as far as operating. We can get on and off, have very little impact. Um, this, you know, kids are going to want to be out here and look at what's going on up there. Um, so basically, if you can concentrate work on the pool house before camp start, then that should, in, in essence, allow for little disruption to, to when camps begin? If, it, if there were no issues with permitting and going through that, that process, um, I would hit the canopy, followed by the pool house, followed by the rec center. Okay. Yeah. We can bring in a, a, a number of guys, and we can just bring in more manpower to hit that if uh, the timing um, and that coordination was an issue. What we'll probably be doing is from a permitting is breaking this out so that we can expedite um, portions of it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Frank, when you guys actually start working on the, um, the canopy at the pool, mm -hmm. Um, what does a normal work day look like? Are you here five days a week, eight hours a day? Does it vary depending on what phase? To, depending on the project, uh, we have projects that will run, um, you know, on the weekends because it doesn't impact. In this case, I think it would be just the opposite. It would be more of an impact. Um, so we can uh, alter our hours and start earlier. Um, night work is, uh, this is, uh, I, I don't think would be particularly effective. Um, it would definitely be some challenges, um, and also just, I'm not sure they would let us work at night. Uh, but uh, starting earlier um, and offsetting some hours, uh, we can certainly do that, and we do that on a regular basis. Okay, so once you basically start in the canopy, you work straight through, or is there lulls where you're waiting for something for a couple of weeks? Typically, we would go have it prepped, and uh, we have to set the foundation, so we have to let that set for a couple of days. Uh, and then we can start loading that, and then we can go straight through. Uh, we have two different types of footings that we're looking at uh, to see if we can have less impact, um, and uh, that we'll see which uh, if they'll approve that with the soil conditions. Um, but this we would focus on and go straight through. Um, once we get the physical structure up and the panels on, 
then we can get, move in and out as far as electrical kind of working around your schedule. Um, getting the physical structure up and secured and the panels on, uh, once we had everything prepped though, we can do rather quickly. And we are doing the design where we're going to do the sonotube um, columns on the outside. Um, so I have the same architectural feature as the rest of the um, pool house. Are there any further questions from either the board or staff? Then uh, I'd like to move it to public comment on, on the issue. Ray? Yeah, well, I think uh, David indicated that um, the clock system and wanted to find out what, what the number is on that as far as what the cost of the system is. Roughly. Since it doesn't affect you at all, uh, does it matter how much it costs us? Uh, there are a number of costs that are the hard costs, direct hard costs, engineering costs, uh, legal time, um, our time, other time that add up to the whole uh, project. We've provided that in the savings analysis to you. Uh, we've provided that total number a couple of times. Um, and I sure don't have that in front of me. David, to, to your point, we're, we're, we again are only paying for the power that's produced. You're only paying for KWH and nothing, if, if, if it costs us twice as much, it won't, it costs us twice as much to finish with him, the KWH rate to the district doesn't change. Thank you. Do you have another question right here? Yeah, uh, one other question. Um, this is for Frank. On the, um, they mentioned a number of jobs that you're going to be doing mm -hmm. on this, on these projects, not only this one. What's, uh, what is that going to be like as far as your capacity to handle, your firm's capacity to handle all those jobs? Um, there, there shouldn't be any issue. Um, this is, we, we're doing this, uh, day in and day out, um, and these projects are not um, particularly large projects from our standpoint, um, so they'll, they should run, from my aspect, uh, rather smooth. So, uh, we're doing these in uh, not only these C pro projects, but we also have a number of other projects going in conjunction. So. And they've asked to do more of the yeah. work and we have, we have under... We have capacity well. to, to take on additional projects. Okay, so it's not like it's 90% no. capacity or something no, like that? not even close. Okay. Yeah, I have a couple just Frank and I've talked technical. What's the uh, manufacturer of the panels you're going to use? These are the uh, proposed of the S Energy. Okay, are you using micros or standard inverters? Uh, on these, we're going to be using a string inverter. Strings? Yes. Okay. Um, the, at this point, uh, these are designed for having an SMA uh, string of okay. Same manufacturers we were talking about before. And we took a good amount of time introducing ourselves to two different microinverter manufacturers and uh, investigated, and particularly for the, uh, let's say, the firehouse end of this building, we were interested in that. And we priced it out, and we got a, an offer from one of the local uh, microinverter manufacturers. It wasn't good enough to, to make a positive difference. Uh, we told them they came back with a better offer, and it was essentially it was essentially a wash. And the engineers that have put this together uh, also considered that once again. So it hasn't been something that we've just thrown out. We have evaluated it. It doesn't pay looked at this um, and did an analysis with um, string inverters, optimizers, and then also um, mm -hmm. inverters. Okay. See so, yeah. uh, There's a question for Mr. Coonhart. Um, at the old Adobe School District uh, that you built last year with your partner, you made the uh, recommendation that they not uh, build shade structures because uh, according to the school records uh, of the meeting, uh, they wouldn't pan out uh, financially. Why are you making a recommendation here 
when clearly that's going to be the major cost uh, that we have to overcome. The, um, the uh, designs that were considered for up to five schools in the Old Adobe District uh, involved many different things. Uh, there was some elevated shade over playground areas, not unlike this. There was elevated shade over parking, more expensive. Uh, there was ground men. Uh, they happened to have, uh, luck, fortunately, and unlike most school districts, they have more acreage than, than most, and they were willing to uh, give over some ground space for a couple of different reasons. We could give more savings to them. So they're looking at over two million dollars of savings for four schools over the course of the 20-year contract. And that is, and so we, we were indifferent as to whether to go with elevated shade structures over parking or the ground mount, but we gave them the cost for KWH for this and the cost pay per KWH for that, and they chose that. And that's why they're getting extraordinary savings. So you've done the same for us. The there's no ground mount. There's no ground area that uh, the district is willing to sacrifice, as far as I'm aware. Of, that, uh, you'd want to give up from green space uh, to put solar on any of your green space. Uh, it would see it, it has uh, appeared from the beginning that having some of the shade where you already have a shade structure. Uh, that's got a little age on it, uh, that, that might be a useful W's. Thank you. Um, so unless there's further questions or comments from the public, um, I'd like to move this. I just have one additional comment to the, the board. Uh, I sent a, a note, which I and also a 71 page uh, thing on power purchase agreements uh, and 10 mistakes uh, school districts make when they uh, sign contracts and I hope that you all had a chance to read it. We probably have about eight of those mistakes uh, currently and I, I really think that there shouldn't be enough, there shouldn't be a rush here if we don't fully un un comprehend all aspects of the contract, and uh, so I'm sure Mr. Kuhnhart has Go something ahead. to say about all uh, of it. Uh, Mr. President, I've actually been uh, made myself in touch with the young attorney, uh, David Soldani, who wrote uh, the 51-page uh, slides uh, show a few years ago. Uh, it is out of date now in some uh, respects, with namely that uh, two-thirds of the of the vendors uh, that he quoted are out of business now and they were kind of run out of the business because early PPAs were not very fair to the customer and that's why we were created as a benefit court to do a better PPA a better job for the municipal agencies and schools and, and I, I there are 15 not 10 there are 15 affirmative things that we do that that attorney recommended and I could go through each one of them very quickly if you would like um, yes there are advantages to the PPA which he points out in the beginning and the end uh, direct purchase I agree is better if you have the money for all cash and want to do that or if you have a big enough system that you can float bonds uh, to do it which you don't uh, then, then you could save more money over the course of 25 years. That has been our understanding that you don't want to do it. They recommend that a school district not proceed with solar unless they do energy efficiency first. You've done energy efficiency first and have already taken the big bite out of the apple. Uh, the, it says don't do it without a competitive process. The SEED program was a competitive process. And that's all been described to you before. It says watch out, you're going to have legal expenses. The legal expenses have been carried taken care of for you by the city of San Rafael. It says, be careful, CEQA can cause you to, to bite you. We have a CEQA exemption completely for rooftop and, and these elevated shade structures, and that's been verified. Uh, it, they, he suggested that uh, you get an energy production guarantee. We've provided that. Uh, it says uh, that, uh, let's see, that you, there is a risk if you have a PPA that goes up by 3 or 4% per year, you could get over the market cost of energy. That's precisely why we go by up by 2.5% and then down by 10% per year after year 15, so that there isn't a risk that you go over the market cost of energy. 
Um, there's a, uh, uh, let's see, failure to look at sort of, oh, he's, the number one mistake that he points out is the failure to not look into solar energy now, even though there is change in, in uh, technology uh, going forward. They talk about insurance, we've got that covered. Uh, removal, we've got that covered with one better because we have a savings account that's going uh, aside. Uh, it says, recommends that there be a site license, not a lease. We've done that. That was one of my strongest recommendations in the industry and, and to the city program. Um, it uh, says confidentiality agreements an issue. The city of Santa Rafael is taking care of that to the advantage of you. Uh, termination should be handled very carefully. We've done that and, and ha have too many paragraphs about termination and what happens. Purchase option says you've got to be very careful. You should have a purchase option at the end. We think you do three purchase options during the course of it, not just one. We, they go on and on about how to hire uh, independent uh, appraisers to do fair market value eva evaluation. We've given a simpler way to do that less expensively, and when the line is going down, your fair market value is going to be lower. Um, it says in dis dispute resolution, it shouldn't be just straight to the law, law firm, it should be informal, then meet, resolve problems, then negotiate, uh, mediate before any litigation. We've already done that in our PPA agreement. Finally, we agree with his last page, which, in which Thomas Alva Edison says there's nothing better for energy production than the sun. So I like that presentation. I think it's great. And there have been many PPAs that have abused public entities. It makes our selling job harder, but that's why we exist and the, why we do our business the way we do. Andrew, detailed response. <coughs> so, <moving> so <laughs> one thing. Um, Stephen, may I make a, one one comment no, because he because was Stephen, able. We are we are already over time. Okay. This. He's, so we're he's, Stephen. When you know, a vendor Stephen, offers you, Stephen, you do not have the floor. Stephen, stop talking. You, you got Stephen, if you do not stop talking now, I'll ask you to leave. Please recognize that you don't have the floor. Please stay within order. Okay, could you give me the floor? If you, no, if you Stephen, allow him to, Stephen, you had to a question. Uh, counter... You had a, Stephen, you had a question and he responded to it. We're moving forward. Okay. So, moving forward now. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll... Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Right. Motion by Director Shea, seconded by Director Climbing Green. Uh, I'm sorry. Does that um, imply a timeline? Construction start is is that immediate start or is is that what the uh, we have on the agenda? Well, we're most making sense. a motion to go forward. And they've already said that they've got every once that they get the approval, then they will. They're ready to move forward. Ready to move, and then we'll they'll be able to communicate back to us in a couple of weeks if they can expedite or not. So I think that there's just no way to know what the timeline is going to be until we get into the project, or until they get into the project. So we'll be able to decide based on the feedback we'll receive will be able to have a say over the start of the active construction, correct? Yes, well, that's my understanding. Okay. And or if we're moving, changing things around, it's going to negatively impact, and I would assume we did in some ways look to staff for their, I mean, at this point, it would get turned over to staff and then they would make those decisions. And that, that's, what, that's what I would like to see is, <clears throat> is rather than have them come back to the board directly. I feel this is at a point where, where both Soul Ed and Dan can work in conjunction with with district staff and district manager on making sure that this happens expeditiously as possible. Jeff, quick question. Yeah. Um, as I understood it, there are probably milestones within this timeline that are, that provide us a go no go decision on certain phases. Is that a correct statement? It, 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 legally, it is more correct, uh, Director Naylor, that it is it gives us the option of go, no go, and compromise, not compromise, with respect to time and money, mm -hmm. with with them. Obviously, there's no point in us trying to steamroller at any point. It doesn't make us 
uh, you have a happy client. Yeah. We want to have a happy 20-year relationship with the client. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got to work it out. We've just got to, we've got to work it out. So to clarify, if we get to a point in this, you know, we give you the green light, you're off doing what you need to do to prepare for construction. Construction starts, there's a delay in some regard, particularly with the area around the pool. We could discuss delaying that and Until proceeding with the remainder of the project. Until is that correct? after the swim season. That yes. is theoretically possible. Okay. Yes. Right. Hand that to you and say that it's free. Right, right, right. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Yes. But I agree with Justin. That I, I mean, I don't think that there's any reason that needs to come back to the board. I feel like staff. Absolutely. And, and I, I, I believe and understand that if staff felt there was a policy decision that did need to come back to the board, then obviously you would, you would bring it back. But Of course. Yeah. So in terms of timing, it will be a factor between approvals, the parties, and also Shane, if you feel like it would threaten the safety of our camps, pool, you, my understanding is you should feel free to delay implementation of a certain phase, yeah. correct? Okay, that was my concern. I don't know if this is helpful at all. It's, uh, that summer, the four schools that we built in the Old Adobe District, uh, three of them had summer camps, and we had temporary fencing that separated all the work from all the kids. Not all of the staging. And staging comes in, and there's pallets, and there's all sorts of stuff. It was free of, of any uh, issues throughout the summer. And uh, that contractor, different contractor, said they could never finish before August 15th when we started on July 3rd. They finished on August 10th. So with four schools, they're all bigger, all bigger systems than, than this. So. Great. All right, sorry for the delay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we can just continue discussing candidly. I think what we probably want to think about is just pros or cons at this point. For me, the, the biggest con if we don't move forward is, is that there would then be financial impact to the district in terms of, of having to pay for work that has been done regarding the issue. And, you know, I, I know it's not ideal, the timeline that we're looking at, but I think that it's still something that can be managed and work, work within especially in, in the different phases and, and whatnot, so. Well, having gone through construction before, the sooner, the better. Yeah. Uh, you make decisions, people are going to be on, on board every day to make crucial decisions because they always arise during construction. And if somebody's around to make those decisions, it's, that's what you need more than anything else, the coordination between Contractor and managing the contractor is is essential, and we're going to have that. Yeah, I'd say that even started the degree. I mean, I've spent time with Frank out on the premises. He's asked direct questions that have guided him and how what we want, how this is going to look, where that's going to go, that it's so on and so forth. So whenever we get the ball rolling, the better. So that's that's my view. Any, any yeah, comments on the board? Yeah, well, a couple, couple quick comments. Um, number one, um, while I, I understand the point about owning the system, um, we are not in a position to own the system. Um, number two, technical obsolescence is a fact of life and is not a reason to delay. And, um, you know, frankly, if we did try to go down the road of um, building this ourselves, all the construction costs um, that we are that are folded into this project would um, also be ours. So uh, at this point, um, things are looking a little bit different for me. We have this bill. Do you have I'm, I'm ready for a yeah. yeah. right. Then I'll call the question to order. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion approved unanimously. 
Thank you both. Thank you for the first it's unanimous vote. <laughs> <laughs> so no problem. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah.